Chapter 21, Extinction. So what is the definition of extinction? According to the text, extinction is a procedure in which reinforcement of a previously reinforced behavior is discontinued and as a result, occurrences of that behavior decrease in the future. So in other words, a behavior that was previously reinforced is no longer being reinforced. So here we have a diagram of extinction. So we see the establishing operation is an individual being deprived of water for a long period of time. And they have a history of reinforcement for getting water when turning the C or the tap labeled with C. So the SD or the cue in the environment is that they see the faucet marked with the blue dot or the letter C. The response or the behavior is that they turn that faucet. And then the reinforcement is that Actually, the reinforcement is that the cold water is withheld, right? Maybe it's broken um, or the water's been turned off. So this behavior that was previously reinforced by being turned on is now not is no longer being reinforced. Um, and so in theory, that would gradually decrease that behavior. In theory, extinction is a procedure that provides zero probability of reinforcement. So the effectiveness is really going to depend on really identifying what the function of the behavior is so that we're appropriately applying the right um, extinction procedure. And extinction does not have to be aversive to decrease a behavior. Extinction does not prevent problem behaviors. It just stops reinforcing these problem behaviors so that eventually they will decrease. So we're changing the environment so that the behavior will no longer be reinforced. And our behavior is part of the environment. So I'll always say in order to change their behaviors, we have to change our own behaviors in response to their maladaptive behaviors, right? So when a student or a client is tantruming to gain access, right, extinction would then be not giving them access at that moment, where maybe in the past, a tantrum was actually something that got them that reinforcer. So there are procedural and functional forms of extinction. So an example of a procedural form would be ignoring a problem behavior, right? And that's a procedure that might not necessarily match a function, um, where it would be considered functional if the function of the behavior was to gain attention. Functional forms of extinction involve withholding the maintaining reinforcer, which we'll talk about in later slide. So I have to make sure that the extinction procedure I'm applying matches the function of that behavior. And applications of procedural forms of extinction are often ineffective, again, because we're not looking at the function of the behavior and matching the appropriate response. And again, extinction is most effective um, when the procedure matches the behavioral function. And a good way to remember this is thinking of Herrnstein's matching law, right? In matching law, we're saying that that replacement behavior has to be more reinforcing than that maladaptive behavior, and it has to meet the same function. So there are four misuses of the term extinction. The first one is using it to refer to any decrease in a behavior. Um, the second one would be confusing forgetting and extinction, which we'll go into more detail later. Um, confusing response blocking and sensory extinction. And then the fourth one is confusing non-contingent reinforcement and extinction. So using extinction to refer to any decrease in behavior, some may use a term 
to refer to any decrease in response performance, regardless of what produced the behavior change. Um, another myth misuse is labeling any reduction in behavior that reaches a zero rate of occurrence as extinction. Another misuse of extinction is confusing forgetting a behavior and actual extinction. So when one forgets a behavior, that means that behavior is weakened over time because they haven't had the ability or the opportunity to admit that behavior, right? So maybe it's more prevention and then they forgot. Where extinction is the behavior is actually weakened because it's no longer producing reinforcement. Another misuse is confusing response blocking and sensory extinction. So response blocking is not an extinction procedure, right? In response blocking, we're physically preventing the behavior from happening, right? So if we're looking at um, automatic reinforcement, right? Like maybe I'm preventing or I'm blocking a student from hitting their head. So maybe I'm physically blocking them from hitting their head, but even if they're not hitting their head and maybe they're hitting my arm because that's what I'm using to physically block them, they could still be getting reinforcement for that, right? So sensory extinction versus response blocking, it can be very difficult to implement extinction when it comes to automatic re automatically reinforcing behaviors, right? Um, because they can still emit that problem behavior and meet that function, even though we're response blocking. And then the last misuse of the term extinction is when we confuse non-contingent reinforcement and actual extinction. So non-contingent reinforcement or NCR we're not withholding reinforcers that maintain the problem behavior. In fact, we're giving that reinforcement, but on a fixed interval, right? So this is more of an abolishing operation. It's an antecedent intervention where extinction is a reactive procedure to the maladaptive behavior. So an extinction, again, we're just changing the consequence of that behavior by not um, giving that reinforcement, right? So they both, um, in NCR, you're diminishing the behavior by changing the antecedent stimuli and an extinction, you're changing the consequence stimuli. So there are three types of extinction procedures. The first one is extinction of behavior maintained by positive reinforcement. The second one is extinction of behavior maintained by negative reinforcement. And then we have extinction of behavior maintained by automatic reinforcement. Behaviors maintained by positive reinforcement are placed on extinction when those behaviors no longer produce that reinforcer. So positive reinforcement would be attention or access to tangibles or activities, right? So extinction for attention would mean they do not get attention in response to those behaviors, tantrums, aggression, etc. Um, extinction for access, right? That means they do not get access to the item or the activity in response to those behaviors. Extinction of behavior maintained by negative reinforcement. This is when behaviors maintained by negative re reinforcement are placed on extinction. So escape extinction, um, when those behaviors do not produce the removal of the aversive stimuli, right? So in other words, they can't escape from that aversive situation. So if they're trying to get out of work, they're trying to get out of a non-preferred task, right? Extinction would then be not allowing them to escape or removing that stimuli. So behaviors maintained by automatic reinforcement are placed on extinction by masking or removing the sensory consequence, also known as sensory extinction. And as I mentioned before, this is not recommended um, for problem behavior. Even self-stimulatory behaviors are maintained by social consequences or negative reinforcement. Extinction effects have not been very clearly documented in applied settings. So the question is why extinction effects have not been clearly documented in applied settings. And practitioners should really view all of the comments on extinction effects um, and think about how they relate to behavioral interventions in the applied setting versus the basic or research setting. 
So there are three main extinction effects, right? The first one is a gradual decrease in frequency and amplitude. The next one is the extinction burst. And then lastly is spontaneous recovery. So extinction produces a gradual decrease in frequency and amplitude of maladaptive behavior, right? It's not a sudden decrease in the behavior. It's consistent exposure of exhibiting that behavior and then that behavior no longer being reinforced, right? Um, however, when reinforcement is removed abruptly, you can see um, what we talk what we will talk about in the next section is the extinction burst, right? So unreinforced responses can follow. And one thing to really think about is that the schedule of reinforcement that that behavior has been on is a huge factor when it comes to extinction and how fast or gradual it'll take for that behavior to decrease. It's often difficult for teachers and parents and other service providers to apply because of the initial increase in frequency and magnitude and the gradual decrease in behavior. So oftentimes, you know, I have to tell them that the behavior will probably get worse before it gets better. Another extinction effect, and probably the most common one, would be the extinction burst. This is an immediate increase in the frequency of the behavior after the removal of the positive, negative, or automatic reinforcement. Problem behaviors can worsen during extinction before they show improvement. Extinction bursts usually suggest that the reinforcers maintaining the problem behavior were successfully identified and showing that there is a good chance of an effective intervention. Another extinction effect is called spontaneous recovery. And this is when the behavior that diminished during the extinction process recurs even though the behavior does not produce reinforcement. So basically, it's saying that the behavior reappears even though it's being continued to be placed on extinction. And spontaneous recovery can be short-lived and limited if the extinction procedure remains in effect. So that means we have to continue placing that behavior on extinction for it to go away. So here's a diagram of what extinction burst and spontaneous recovery will look like. So before extinction, you see the behavior occurring at a certain rate. You implement extinctions, you see an immediate spike in the behavior, then you see a gradual decrease, and then a reoccurrence of the behavior, and then back to a gradual decrease. So here's a graph. This is in your textbook. Um, and basically, it's looking at implementing extinction by using mittens to place hair twirling on extinction. And we're looking at an individual across two settings. So you'll see in the first setting in the bedroom, they collect baseline. They implement the use of mittens. And you'll see the behaviors decrease. Um, at the same time, you'll see the baseline and the daycare setting increase or at a rate because there's no mittens involved. They go back to baseline and you see um, fluctuating rates of the hair twirling. Um, they implement the mittens in the daycare setting. You see it go down. Um, they go back to baseline. So you move the mittens in the daycare setting. You see the hair twirling re reappear. Um, and then in both settings, uh, you'll see that the um, percentage of session time engaged in hair twirling has decreased to zero. This is figure 21.2 in your book. And this is looking at the number of problem behaviors per minute by a client named Drew during baseline and escape extinction conditions. So you will see that the behavior is slightly elevated during baseline when they implement the escape extinction. So basically, the behavior he's exhibiting to get out of a task is no longer being reinforced. So you do see a gradual decrease. When they go back to baseline, you see that behavior increase again. And then um, 
implementing the escape condition again, you see that the behaviors uh, start to decrease again.